Hello everybody, I hope you're well. First and foremost, a massive thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. More about them a little bit later on. Now, the whole point of this video is to condense our previous two videos down to much smaller bite-sized chunks of exactly how to build a warm deck roof. It's all gonna be chaptered. We realize that our videos, they're quite long, they're 40 minutes plus. We make no apologies for that. That's the kind of stuff that we like to produce. However, we realize that if you're on site or you wanna, you've got a project coming up and you want a quick YouTube of how to do something, you really want it in a much smaller condensed version. Well, this is it. So we're gonna crack straight on with it then of how to build a warm deck roof with the best possible thermal efficiency. So the first thing I thought that I'd explain to you is the fact that the construction of the flat roof is just a construction of a flat roof. There's nothing about it that denotes whether it's a warm or a cold deck. It's everything you do from this point onwards, in which case, obviously, this one's going to be a warm deck. Now, what I'm just pointing to there is pieces of PIR insulation that we've found in between all the rafters. That's because the internal skin of our parapet wall is going to be insulated timber. And obviously, the external wall as you can see, is block work. Now, all that will be explained at the end of the video when we go through the theory of why we've done everything that is that we've done. But for the time being, we're just gonna talk through the actual stages from this point on of a warm deck construction. Stage one, the bottom deck. We use 15 mil OSB here. You can use 18 mil if you like. A lot of people like to use 18 mil because they wanna screw their top deck down straight through into that 18 mil OSB at the bottom. We don't do that, we go straight into the rafters. We find that better and we'll explain why at the end of the video. Now all we're doing here is just filling in that roof structure with OSB, that's all it is. Now here we're adding a little thermal element to the internal skin, which is gonna be timber for our parapet wall, um, just by laying some foam down. Yes, it's mechanically fixed as well. And then all we're doing here is creating a simple ladder frame, which we will insulate and clad in OSB later on. And this is how we tied our external block work into our internal ladder frame, just wall ties built in as standard and then just penny washed and screwed through. And this is the very nearly finished products of stage one. All you basically do, as I said earlier, you just fill in that complete deck with OSB, be it 15 mil, 18 mil, whatever you choose, and get it just complete and as full as you possibly can. Any gaps, why not? Give it a little bit of foam, it certainly won't hurt. And then we're on to stage two. Stage two, vapor barrier. Extremely important phase this is. Now, by all means, shop around, get the best deal that you can. It's expensive stuff no matter where you go. That's what we found. This particular product is from Sika. The only difference with this that we found with other products is this is foil side down, which is extremely sticky. It works a treat, no primer needed. As you can see there, we're going around uh, getting the upstands up at least to the top of the insulation, in which case this is 150 millimeters. And then we're covering every every square millimetre of stage one. You've got to go over it. You've got to get as flat as possible. Um, 100, uh, 100 mil overlap where possible. Just go for it. Cover it and cover it again. It's that important. And as you can see here, this is the finished product. Now, what we need to do, because it's that time in the video, is have a quick word of our sponsors, which is this week, HelloFresh. Now what HelloFresh don't know, and I won't know till they see this video, is that we as a family have been a customer of theirs for quite a while now. The whole concept just works for us. We simply go onto their website, choose what meals that we want for the forthcoming week, and all the fresh ingredients of which get delivered straight to our door. All we do with them is follow the supplied step-by-step -step recipe guides, and there you go. It's so convenient for us. It really, really does work. Not only that, it gives us more ideas as well as to what to cook for our family. So just to demonstrate how easy this process is, we've chosen our meals and they've been delivered, all with corresponding numbered recipe cards to the bag. And all you do is choose your meal and you just go for it. Now in terms of the inspiration that this gives you, there's no way I would have chose Portuguese inspired peri peri feast for the kids, but I saw it as an option. We bought it, all, all the food that you see here was included. We cooked it as a family and we really, really enjoyed it. But today I'm having a 21 day old rump steak with truffle dolphin wild potatoes. Why? Because it's my birthday and I fancy a bit of a treat. So all I do is get the corresponding card out, open all the bags up, and here we are, and we have all the ingredients within them. Follow the step-by-step -step guides, and it won't be long before you've got a delicious meal in front of you. Now, if you just check out this steak now, it's absolutely beautiful. It's so fresh, 
really, really is fantastic. And there you have it. Now, this recipe included chicken stock paste, Italian style cheese, red wine dew, truffle zest, all of which was included within the bags. It really was beautiful. And we even had time for pudding. Speaking of puddings. HelloFresh are offering you, our viewers, free desserts for life on Income Mine, plus 60% off your first box. Now to redeem that, either click the link that's in our description, scan the QR code that's on screen now, or go to their website using the promo code BUILDERS60. All that will take you straight through to that fantastic deal. Thank you once again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back onto that warm roof. Stage three, the insulation. Now this is England and it's 2024. That means that we have to use 150 millimeters of PIR foil backed insulation. That's what our building inspector has told us and that's what we've got to do. If you're told any difference or if you read any difference and that's fair enough, but this is what we've been told and that's what we've got to use. And this is quite an easy, satisfying process. You just lay it down on top of your vapor barrier and away you go, any gaps, again, foam if you need to, but we tape all the joints as well, trying to keep it as airtight as possible. For those who are interested, that tool there that Richard's using is his Fez Tool Insulation Cutter. It's an expensive piece of kit, and that is its sole job, just to cut insulation, but it really does give a perfect cut every single time, nice and square, makes the process incredibly easy. And you just carry on, and you just, go straight over phase two with the insulation all the way around and you can see there the vapor barrier just sticking up just a, just above it because that's how high that we've got to go and you just carry on it's as simple really as it looks you get nice and tight get it all on there and don't forget to tape those joints and here you can see all the joints are taped and are ready to go onto stage four Stage four, the final stage, the top deck. This is 11 mil OSB fixed down straight on top of your insulation, straight through down into the rafters. That's very, very important. That's what we find anyway. We do not go into the bottom layer of OSB. Now, again, this is a very simple process, but you can get it wrong simply by using the wrong fixings. Now, we think that it is essential that you use firmly broken fixings in order to do this. Now, we'll put them on screen now for you we've got them off the internet they are 100 mil thick and we use a 100 mil screw these screws were especially with them except we found that a 100 mil coarse red drywall screw works just as well and also at the end of this video we'll give you some hints and tips about how to fix them down i think you're supposed to use about 12 per board that's well over 100 fixings in this roof don't spare on them but make sure you use those fixings and that you go straight into the rafter, not the OSB below. And here's some finished products now. This is the uh, pre-top coat of the GRP. And then coming up now is the final GRP top coat with the glass installed. And that is basically that. Well, there you go. Four easy steps, really quite simple, but there's a few pitfalls along the way. And if you fall into them, you won't get it as firmly efficient as it possibly can be. And that is the whole point. You've got to get things nice and tight, get that insulation in there, make sure you use the right amount for a start. Use the correct vapor barrier. Definitely use those firmly broken fixings into the rafters. And once you've used them, before you roof it, fill the hole up, just stop the hole that the screw goes through, fill that up, a bit of filler, silicon, foam, whatever you want. What we don't want is that to be a air gap that can contract and expand over the years and cause whatever roof you put over it to fail. Now what we're going to go into now, which is going to explain a couple of hints and tips regarding fixing down those firmly broken fixings. And then we're going to go into the theory of why we've used the internal timber parapet wall and also the whole process of fixing those fully broken fixings into the rafters, why that's so important. Right then, we're uh, coming to our finishing stages with the fixing the top piece of ply down. You'll see on here, if you, you can see it on the camera, you can see the lines, and what these lines represent are the joists, or the flat roof rafters, whichever you want to call them, um, underneath the insulation, because in order for these to work right, and Adam will go into it later on, uh, I think these need to go into your into your your substructure, not just into your plywood, because what happens is these drop into there like that, 
and sticks out the bottom. So if you imagine then you've got your 161mm, uh, which is your 50mm and your 11mm on top, and then your 18mm. We sort of into the ply, but if you just put it anywhere you want, my opinion is all this, these ends stick out the bottom of the ply, and that negates using one of these thermal fixings. So anyway, Adam will go into that a bit more later on. So I've marked all my flat roof rafters on here. I've made sure that all my centres work. Then what I'll do is, just a bit of a tip, tips for you when you're fitting these, I'll then get a big uh, brad point bit, the width of that, drill my hole, like that. So I'll drip that nice and um, upright if I can. And then if I can get my hammer from somewhere, wherever I put it. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Michael in the background is fitting all these trims on as well, getting ready for fiberglass. So you just make sure it's all clear, all clean, and then knock these in. Make sure they're sitting flush. And then the main thing with these is, um, you can get special screws for these because they've got a smaller head. What you don't want to do is do it with an impactor because you can pull these straight through. If you imagine this now, looking at that, you can see it's slightly cone shaped. You can pull that straight through the bottom of there and it doesn't fix it. So what I tend to do is turn my drill down number one and use a normal drill. And then I just, let me just go back a little bit. What I do is I then put a bit of tape on there like that so I can sort of see where my depth is so I don't go too far. Can you see that? And then what I do then is I'll know then where I am. So I'll just take it nice and steady. And if you, I don't know if you're about to see it on this board, but you can see it pulling in and that's when you want to stop. You see that pulling in on the camera? I don't know if you can, but if you can't, you can see it pulling in and then you just stop. That's all you need. Um, you know you've got it then. You know the fixing's done. Um, so that's just a couple of tips for you really. Uh, you need to make sure you, you set out properly. And then the ideal is you need about 12 per board, but that's based on 600 centres. We've done 400 centres, so we've put more fixings down, which isn't going to be detrimental. But uh, I'm pretty sure the manufacturers say that it should be 12 per 8 foot by 4 foot board. 2, 4, 40, 12, 20. There we are. I just wanted to show you this because this is a great visual example of what we're trying to achieve here. That ice cream van's going to be quick, isn't it? They've really got this <laughs> um, We've got our thermal mass, if you like, with the thermalite wall. And then that then is continued up with the PIR in between the rafters and then continued up again into the parapet. And then we've insulated all the parapet right the way to the very top. And I'll just put a, a bit of footage on the screen now of tying the ties in or screwing the ties in into the side of the uprights. So the external block work is now tied in, I mean, to the nth degree, really, into this timber frame at the back of it, which is insulated right to the very top and then sealed off firmly, not, not uh, watertight or anything, but sealed off with PIR along the top and then foamed in. Now, for the reason for that is, where any warm air, warm air, warm air meets cold air, we want that to be out of the roof. We want it to be as high up as possible, not down it. We're worried that if we don't insulate this parapet, then that bit there is going to be cold air, or top of the roof will be cold air, and then it will meet the warm air from the room, and then it will start to condensate and cause issues and sweat and all that sort of stuff further on down like it might take years to come through but it will do eventually that's what we're worried about so we've insulated all that now you let us know whether we've gone above and beyond here and insulated that for absolutely no good reason by all means put it in the comments and we'll learn a bit from it but bet on braces it can't do any harm in doing that because where the cold air meets the warm air now it can only be up here which is x amount of millimeters outside of the fabric of the building which is good we think and that's what we've done. That wall there, I'll explain a little bit later. I'll move out Richard's way so we can crack on. But yes, that's that's why we've done done it the way that we've done it. If we'd come up here in masonry, so to speak, and then not put that wall plate in and then continue this up in block work, then the inside wall becomes an outside wall. And then that dew point or where that cold air meets the warm air will be at this level here, which again will cause the issues that we're trying to negate by doing what we've done here so we think 
that this is a much firmly efficient, better way of doing things. Absolutely. Whether or not we've, you know, over-egged the pudding, we don't know, but we certainly haven't under-egged it, which is what we want. No, 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 we haven't done anything detrimental. Now, where this is slightly different, as you can, as you remember, the, the rafters go this way, so PIR can come up this way. Over here, there's a rafter come here, and then the lintel, so there's nothing here to, to do. Now, what we could have timbered across, laddered out, if you like, and, and done it uh, exactly the same, but we thought that we can come straight off the lintel in the block work and come up to this height, um, because the lintel downstairs is a steel, not a lintel, so there's no thermal break in that steel. We have to put it in later by insulating the back of it. By insulating the back of it, then we've got to insulate the entire wall to bring it out, albeit it's only a couple of, it's only a couple hundred mil either side uh, for the reveals. That then will stand that wall off firmly past this point here. So the thermal, it'll be firm, it'll, it'll be, what am I trying to say? It'll be firmly efficient all the way up. Because don't forget, we've got 150 mil of insulation to go to that, that point there. The thermal uh, plasterboard will come to about here. We've got the vapour barrier to go in between. So we think that that's good. And hopefully, hopefully it will be. Right then, we're just going to have a quick mock-up here and just to explain, hopefully, the best I can as to why we think that these fixings, these firmly broken fixings, are superior to any other fixing when it comes to warm deck roof. Now the whole point of a warm deck roof, obviously, is the insulation properties that it gives you. They are much better than the cold roof, much easier than the cold roof. We're going to go all into that next week when we actually build one, which is going to be down there. Anyway, so what we've got here then, we're going to pretend that these are our rafters. Now on top of that, you'll have the diminishing patterns, all that sort of stuff, which we're not going to do for this. However, these are our rafters. On top of that, we've used 15 mil OSB. We've got our um, vapor barrier there, 150 mil insulation, which is to build in rigs uh, as they are in England 2024 where we are now depending where and when you're watching this video and on top of that we've got 11 mil OSB and then our firmly broken fixing straight through. Now Richard explained earlier why it's important that we find our rafters uh, when we're fixing these uh, fixing the, fixing these fixings through. Now there is that as he said obviously you get a much better fixing should that actual screw go into the actual real timber. It's a much better fit, of course it is, right? However, from a thermal point of view, one of the reasons why we like to find the rafters as well is that, as you can see there, and that isn't particularly tight, I haven't done that on purpose, that's a 100 mil drywall screw. We'll go into why we've used that in a second. As you can see there, that's not the perfect fit. It's not down properly. So I haven't give it the, the billy big licks going straight into it. That's just the way it is, right? Now, as a fixing, that is fine. In a warm deck, that's fine. However, a lot of faith by doing it that way has been put into the vapour barrier. Now, apparently, these vapour barriers self-seal. You put a screw through it, it seals it up, it's like a, a, a bitumen kind of thing. It seals itself, so that therefore, it's still doing its job, even with a hole through it, the vapour from the room re reaches that barrier and it can't go any further, and it keeps all that heat, all that energy in the room that you're heating and paying for. That's the theory. However, how many fixings are on this roof, Rich? Uh, it's got to be more than 100, I reckon. More than 100. And this roof isn't that big, really. No. If we were to drill or screw through 100 holes through a vapour barrier and just wherever we wanted to put them, we didn't find a single rafter, are we really suggesting that every single one of those holes is self-sealed and that vapour barrier is as good as it was before we put anything through it at all? I don't know for definite and I'm not going to put my faith in it 100%. So we like, to we like to find our rafters, thus giving it a better chance of that heat, that energy coming up through that moisture, coming through and not being able to get through the vapour barrier. Because in theory, where that vapour barrier spans the rafters, it's untouched, there's no holes through it, thus being as firmly efficient as it can possibly be. Now, if you didn't do it, 
The top of that screw is around about there, so you've got metal there, obviously, through the screw. The heat comes up, it hits that metal, it travels through, and then it gets to around about, argument's sake, around about there. That is where the warm air will meet the cold air, <coughs> it will be within the insulation, and that's perfectly fine. But we just think if you find the rafter, we think it's better. You're not putting so much faith in that being self-sealing, and you are just, it's that extra little bit just to give that peace of mind that you are doing the best you possibly can to keep those heating costs down. Now there are fixings on the market, um, quite readily available, huge screws that just go straight through, finish the top of the deck and they go straight through either in the rafter or into that bottom deck down there. There's also nails, huge nails, little twist things, they hammer straight through and they pull it down and they fix it down lovely. However, what you've then just done is create a pathway of this metal straight through from the warm air of the room straight to the very top of the roof and that energy is just going to go straight through and as I say this one has got at least a hundred so if you can imagine putting a hundred trying to get it spend all the money on insulation all the money on the vapor barrier doing everything and then you're hammering or, or screwing down over a hundred metal rods that bridge the gap from the warm air to the cold air you've just you, you may as well have that have not done it yes you put all that insulation it's going to do something but this is all about being the best as it possibly can be it's expensive stuff if you're going to buy it if you're going to do something let's just try and be as best as we, as we can be with a bit of research to building regs and a bit of common sense hopefully what we've done here as i say is the best that it can be and keep those heating costs down because they ain't going down by themselves so if you can put a little bit of heat in the room and it does as much as it possibly can and it stays there, we think that's all the best, what do you think? And also just lessen the, the chance of condensation as well. Because like you say, you've got metal going all the way through, puncturing into that void there between your rafters, and you've got loads of cold, then your cold metal, yeah. heat hitting the yeah. cold metal, is it going to form condensation? You, yeah. you don't know, do you? So no. this way, we think, is just... We think. We don't think we've hit we've missed any rafters. So as I say, the gap between the rafters has got uncompromised vapor barrier through mm -hmm. the entire build here. Yeah. Again, 150 mil insulation, that on top, firmly broken fixings, any air, any moisture that's cut through is only gonna to get to about there, not to the very top. What more can we say? What more can we do? What more can we do? But that's why we've that's why we've sourced, had to source them, and that's why we did that, done exactly what we've just done. You've got to compromise on the finish, as, as I explained earlier, because you will see those. That will be a bump in the in the road, so to speak. Um, you, you you won't get you, know, you can't counter sink them. If you to counter sink them, there's, there'll be no meat there left at all to actually hold this thing down. So that is as it's flush there. That is how it is, and there's nothing you can do about that. But again. Fill, it, fill those up, I reckon. Um, fill those holes up with sealing to do something. Just try and get the air out because especially for GRP in it, that is going to expand, contract, and it could cause an issue further on down the line. But, however, I think, I think that's it. Put it in the comments if you think it's, if it's nonsense or it's, uh, it's done it wrong or could have done better. Always willing to learn, mate. Nice one. Well, there you have it, end of video. Hopefully you found that interesting, you learned something from it. Now, if you want to do more videos like this, by all means, let us know. We know that they're re-edited from other videos, but we really want to try and create something that if you just need that information, you can just go to and get it about specific subjects. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Really, really appreciate it. Can't recommend them enough. Free puddings as well, excellent. And until next time, take care.